Let's begin. The meeting is recorded, just so everyone's aware. Uh, new items of discussion? I do have one thing that I wanted to raise real quick before we get into the oil and gas conversation, which is that when I was at CCAP, um, the discussion was brought up about Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Did I bring that up in work session yet? No. I don't think I have. Yeah. So, the state of Pennsylvania, through CCAP, I believe, was able to negotiate a contract with Airbnb so that when um, hotel tax, so that the, basically Airbnb adds hotel tax in Pennsylvania and does take it. But then you need a separate agreement. The county, each county needs a separate agreement with Airbnb in order to remit payment to the county. And so Butler County and several other, Butler's who I was talking to about it, but there were several counties that have already done it. Uh, we should get the language that Butler County passed uh, for an agreement with Airbnb and it should be standard enough that Airbnb will just uh, countersign immediately. But um, Dan, would you be willing to... So then do does the Airbnb itself submit that to us? Correct. Because I have one that's already signed up. Right. And I have got another call this morning on another one that is getting ready to sign up. Yes, yeah, so going forward, Airbnb would actually be able to take it right off the top when you um, you know, when you reserve Airbnb or whatever, when you pay Airbnb International before it comes back down to the local person. So in that way, the local people do not have to deal with this at all. They don't have to do the filings or anything. That's my understanding. I, anyway. And so all we have to do is get the language for the agreement from Butler County, pass it as a resolution, and then um, submit it to Airbnb. Okay. So would you be kind enough to talk to Butler County? Mm-hmm. Plug it in. Thank you. The thing that reminded me was the county news this morning was talking about short-term rentals. So okay. I forgot to bring it up before. Thank you, Ben. We have, uh, do you two wish to go over anything before we but I figured we'd turn over to our guests? Yeah, the only thing that I wanted to touch on schedule-wise, that's it for projects. Um, I think everything else can wait until next week. Schedule-wise, remember that tomorrow is the Knox Law event, so if anybody wants to go up to Erie for their summit, I think it's, you said it starts at 1.30? Mm -hmm. So we'll need to leave here at like noon um, in order to get up there. I'm working with someone in Children and Youth tomorrow, so I'm not available for that. Okay. Um, can you maybe send out an email to the township supervisor for my time? I remember. Uh, yeah, we already did once. I think Jeff gave me a okay. copy of the, uh, and we can remind them again if you'd like. Yeah, sorry, right, there, there, there a conference. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, the 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 conference. Conference. That's why I had it on my calendar to go to dinner with township supervisors tonight. Because I'm going to be an expert tonight. Yeah. Okay. Just boroughs in the city would would not be at the conference, it's just peace ash, but yeah, right. I've forgotten about that. Okay. Good point. Perfect timing on that, huh? <coughs> yes. All right. We have some guests here with us. Would you like to bring up your issue? Yes, I'm reading my discuss who go first, uh, but the three of us here are uh, essentially here for the same reasons. Uh, okay. There is a uh, well well that's been developed in Mike Warren, that's the uh, one I'm mostly interested in, and another one is about the uh, potentially developed in Pleasant Township is where the tools are here. So, uh, but I can begin. I, I sent a copy of an issue paper to the commissioners, and I don't know if that got circulated and everybody saw it. If you, if you haven't seen it, you want a copy of it, a couple of extra copies. Um, essentially, I'm personally here uh, in the sphere of inquiry and to understand uh, really what the county's position is and the reason why the county doesn't seem to feel that it has a role in enforcing its own ordinance on oil and gas development, especially oil and gas development that occurs in floodplains and in residential neighborhoods. Um, and if you've read the issue paper, leaned it, um, you know that the, I, what I've done is I've cited various articles from the ordinance that seem to pertain and yet are not enforced. And they're enforced, to my knowledge, on every other commercial or industrial use. But oil and gas um, well development seems to be excluded for reasons that I don't understand. 
So I guess what I'm looking for is uh, finding out what the legal authorities might be that prohibit the county from that type of enforcement or other reasons that might prevent the county from enforcing its zoning rights. Dan, can you answer that for the Yeah, if, if I could, going back into the time when the zoning ordinance was first uh, created back in the 1960s, uh, oil and gas development was addressed in that ordinance, but it was um, addressed as a use by special exception, which meant that the zoning officer didn't have the authority to uh, you know, uh, address it, had to go before what we call the zoning hearing board, a five-member volunteer body appointed by the <coughs> county commissioners. Um, in, and I've been with the county since 1990 and uh, began uh, my service as the zoning administrator for the first eight years of my employment with the county. Uh, in that time, uh, we, Michael has done some research, we've done four, five, uh, or 11. 11 altogether um, applications before the zoning hearing board uh, for that type of use. They all came from the same company over in Erie County. None of the locals had ever, over all that time since 1968, ever gone through and applied for a special exception. Um, a lot of these wells that are out there are, are way off the beaten path. You can't really tell it's an oil lease road unless you were to actually go back there. Uh, and, and going on private property was something that uh, we were discouraged from doing uh, without the permission of the owner. But going back to uh, the, the um, drilling company in Erie County, they would submit an application for special exception. The board would hold, advertise and hold its hearing and there was only, only one single question that ever came up from any of the residents who attended and that was, what's going to happen to my water supply? Well, the board nor the staff are not geologists, we could not answer that question. It was something that's left more in the hands of uh, the DEP, which would have been DER at the time. So in reviewing uh, the history behind the hearings, the Planning Commission back about in 1996 just recommended to the commissioners to pull oil and gas extraction entirely out of the ordinance because the only concern seemed to be people's water supply and not, uh, not anything else uh, relative to the activity. Uh, when we, um, uh, we adopted a, uh, a brand new ordinance in 2008, it did not include oil and gas. There was also the Oil and Gas Act that was uh, in effect at the time. And then along came Act 13, uh, which at the time uh, prohibited uh, municipalities from regulating uh, the industry. They had to allow it in all zoning districts. That was challenged and um, uh, the, the courts have ruled that uh, municipalities can regulate uh, the, um, that particular use in, in zoning districts, certain zoning districts as long as they allow it someplace within their municipalities. The problem that we have had here in Warren County, uh, and I brought the, um, the two maps with me that are relatively pertinent to the two municipalities that these folks uh, represent. This is, and can you folks, you can walk and walk and take a look at it. This is Conowango Township, okay? And this map is done at a scale of one inch equals 1,000 feet. To tell you what the colors mean, everything in green is agricultural. Everything in the uh, two different shades of the tan are business or commercial. The gray is an industrial, and we have two shades of pink. Those are both our residential districts. We have a residential one and a residential two. Now, when, when these districts were first laid out, there was the belief at the time that the county was going to continue to grow. 1968 population was on the increase. The um, uh, elected officials and the uh, planning commission at the time felt that as the county continued to grow, residential development was going to reach out into these areas here. So they, they set the zoning districts up as residential one to reflect that uh, projected uh, expansion of residential uses. If you look at the, these lines on here are all property lines. 
And you can see that a number of the residential one districts are sizable to the tune of a few hundred acres. To simply say uh, drilling is not allowed in our residential districts would hamstring all of these properties here. And I can tell you for a fact, there are wells all over those hillsides. So it would prohibit them from, uh, from doing any activities there. You uh, Pleasant Township, it's the same kind of a situation. This map, however, is done at a scale of one inch equals 3,000 feet because the tax is so large. Now, everything north of here, this is Conowango, we're into Pleasant Township here. Again, one to 1,000, you see huge tracts of residential properties. So to prohibit the activity in an R1 district is, I think we're, it would create a big backlash. An option could be to develop another or create another residential district for the rural areas that are like these large tracts. Keep the small ones R1 and the R2 is actually set up for multifamily. You'll see duplexes and uh, apartment buildings in R2s. But in these outlying areas there, or like maybe a rural residential that would allow for those kinds of activities to... Or maybe tracts of land that are greater than a certain... Yeah, it's greater acreage. than a certain minimum uh, acreage. Or, but you would have to do it so that you're not going to create some spot zoning. If you look here, these are a couple of large tracts of land here too, whereas they're surrounded by rather small tracts. <coughs> Could you also do it by, you know, not necessarily, res not really necessarily restricting or prohibiting it, but but do it by limitations in terms we, of proximity uh, to like property lines. Yeah, and, and you raise a good point, um, but our research in this uh, tells us that um, state regulations preempt local. And so the DEP says you cannot drill a, a well closer than 200 feet to an existing structure. But, yeah. not but not property lines. They don't address property lines. And there's a reason for that that I found out. Under a lot of these properties here, you have one subsurface owner, but multiple surface owners. Mm -hmm. You cannot restrict by law a subsurface owner for accessing his subsurface rights. That's where it gets really complicated. And so to simply say, uh, so far from a, a, a surface property line is not going to solve the problem, especially if that subsurface right goes under multiple properties. Uh, we have spent an awful lot of time looking at this whole thing here. My only suggestion was to maybe create another residential district uh, to to rezone the larger ones. But we know I mean you're you're essentially talking about a massive rezoning though. I mean across the board, uh, <coughs> which in the which whole county, yeah. Which in some ways might not be bad in the sense that there are areas that are probably more restricted than they need to be. There's no, <coughs> excuse me, there's no way to just change the ordinance? Well, what we have to do is, the, the map is part of the ordinance, Cindy, so we have to um, create the district okay. and, and list the uses and then change the maps to reflect which properties are in those districts, that newly created district. So it's actually, a, it's, it would be a, a two-step process where you would have the planning commission come up with a, um, a proposed set of amendments along with map changes, and then uh, you folks as commissioners hold a public hearing and have the authority to make those, those final changes. So this has been back and forth in the courts a lot. Uh, what really st uh, stirred the hornet's nest, if you will, uh, were some activities in southwestern Pennsylvania down, um, down south of Pittsburgh with some unconventional gas. Uh, extraction, the Marcellus and Utica and so forth. But um, like I said, going back to my original comment, the only thing we ever heard from folks is, what's going to happen to my water supply? And we just do not feel qualified to answer that. The DEP addresses setbacks from buildings and so forth and other things, um, including floodplains. So we've just had the hands-off approach and let the DEP take care of it. We have a situation here in North Warren, one proposed in uh, Pleasant Township. The one in North Warren
has already been approved by the DEP. They've already punched the hole. If we were to create something restricting uh, that activity in all residential one, they would still be grandfathered in. So it would not solve the existing situation. Now I can tell you though, that the North Warren Municipal Authority, working with the Conalonga Township Supervisors, is, is developing a source water protection plan. And part of that, they're going to come to the county and ask that the county adopt an overlay for two zones that they've identified to protect their public water supply system. And in that, uh, we can insert oil and gas extraction is prohibited within zone one and zone two. So if, for instance, uh, any other properties within that identified area, and I apologize, I don't have that map with me right now, but it's a pretty sizable zone too. Oil and gas wells could not be um, punched within those two zones. Uh, How, okay, is it, that's kind of my issue with this, is that uh, I, I don't, I personally don't like the idea of having a broad across the board boilerplate way of dealing with this, because to me, to some degree, it's a community by community issue, because you could end up, uh, there are certain people who have absolutely no issue with this, would be furious with any kind of a change that would affect them, and would, if by their appearance, negatively. On the other hand, there's no recourse for a community who says, like, within the walls of this area, we don't, you know, we don't want any drilling. Uh, and so my question is, is with what you're talking about with, like, you know, spaces that are designated as no drilling, how is it determined that a community may, or how are those lines drawn? What okay, what, what would happen, Jeff, is it would go through the zoning ordinance, and if, if things were to move forward with my uh, thought or suggestion of creating a new zoning district specific to re rural residential, mm -hmm. you could say in the zoning ordinance in residential one districts, those remaining, Mm -hmm. uh, oil and gas extraction is prohibited. The city does that. Yeah. The city, if you look around all small pieces of property, very close proximity to each other. But our R1 is very different than their R1 because of the size of those, of those yeah. lots. So the, the authority then is going to ask the county, uh, which would include the uh, commissioner since it would be an amendment to the ordinance, to do an overlay zone of that zone one and two for their source water withdrawal area, uh, and it would act as, as a transparent overlay on top of the existing zoning district. So in other words, if it goes, if that zone two goes into like commercial districts, those commercial uses would still be allowed, but if there's oil and gas extraction planned in that particular area, that would be prohibited. Okay, so if they're permitted to do this, say we approve that, mm -hmm. then why couldn't all municipalities do basically the same thing? Well, we're doing, it, well we're, we're doing it because we have a zoning ordinance in place that covers these municipalities. Okay. It covers 12. Yes. Right. The unzoned municipalities, I don't know what they would do other than adopt their own zoning right. ordinance. And that, that may be an easier solution to this issue rather than creating a new R1. Well, well, the R1, my thought was leave the R1s <coughs> for the small, small property, but create a new district for large tracts, right. a new okay. residential district. So, in your opinion, that would be a more simplified method of correcting this? As I, I would think that that would be better because then you're not hamstringing those large tracts where there is activity going on and where there's not been a, a, a situation similar to what these folks here are facing. And, and I, and I got to tell you, this is the first that I've heard uh, of, of, a, uh, of extraction drawing attention to the local residents in my 27 years with the county. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Now you have a map that shows, the, I think you guys are more aware of the situation in North Warren, but I mean, because it's sort of there, I mean, you can look at mm -hmm. it. I have a map here, a flat map, that shows you the, the location of, you know, what we're talking about in Pleasant Township, and uh, maybe yeah, that will be it was easier. Yeah, Street. Uh, yes, maybe it'll be easier well, than. Actually, Could you uh, identify yourself? I'm sorry. Christine Tool. Christine, nice to you.
So the platinum up here, if you just take it, just so they have an idea of what, what Dan is even talking about here in residential. If you hold it uh, so that it, this is really north, uh, heading north. So this is north, south. The, um, this is our property. Mm -hmm. This is a little piece of two acres and it's surrounded by residential property. Okay. Um, as of right now, the well location is about five to 10 feet off of my property line uh, is where the proposed well is. And so I think, you know, what Dan is saying is that in these small areas, of course we're concerned in, in terms of my property value. Okay. Um, all of the neighbors over in this area are going to be impacted by all kinds of issues with the well. Um, stuff out here certainly, you know, isn't an issue for people. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with the mm -hmm. way it's zoned right now. Whereas something sitting in the middle of a residential neighborhood is it, kind of an issue. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us would want an oil wall five to 10 feet. Now, um, if this is approved, it will go in because, you know, it's, it's already legal. Uh, so what he has given their permission well no. it, it's still it's on the very end of the process um, okay. it's still trying to get a variance for a water well and the DEP is very generous with their variances so, that's an opinion sorry <laughs> but I won't argue. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm going to say um, you know in my opinion it's most likely it will be granted maybe I'm wrong um, but anyway whether it is granted or not at this point you know there's nothing we can do about this well but this isn't right for residences in an R1 zone. Um, nobody wants it in the neighborhood. Uh, it's it's going to be a big loss of property value and you know health issues and quality of life issues. So what we're doing really is looking to the future and saying, how can we prevent this? Uh, we don't want to stop oil drilling. Certainly, not in Pennsylvania. You know, all of these places which are. <laughs> not right next to somebody. And that little dot on that map is the only spot that is 200 feet from all of the houses. If you look at the overlapping circles, that's it. Um, who owns the mineral rights? The guy yeah, who owns the this piece of property here. Yeah, the, 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 the rest of the mineral rights, every person owns all the way around that property. It was originally one property which was broken up and the mineral rights went with all of those properties. That's what we've been researching. We don't have mineral rights on our property. Okay. That's really what I was trying to get. And, and that's good because. That's uh, very good. Yeah, you're not having to deal with subsurface. I have some information here. This is some uh, research and court cases on um, some challenges versus the Allegheny National Forest and being able to get in, in there and ex extract their subsurface <coughs> rights. Uh, I'm not going to go through it, I'm just providing that for you for um, your reading pleasure. Uh, and then um, I've also uh, included what the Oil and Gas Act currently says about, um, you know, the, the, what she was talking about, Ms. Tool was talking about with the setbacks of 200 feet from structures uh, and, and then also dealing with floodplain. Now, they do, granted we have a floodplain ordinance in the, uh, in the zoning ordinance, but part of the review process with the DEP is reviewing it from a floodplain standpoint, so we leave it in their hands. Um, Michael's got some background on this that he did some research on, but there are certain conditions that have to be met in order for the floodplain rates to kick in and prohibit that kind of an operation there. I don't know if you want to add to that any, Michael? Yeah, I don't have all the information. Basically, when the thing came up with the, the well and uh, Mark Warren there. That's when we learned that at the county level we have nothing to say when they do with the flood and like it's, it's up to the DEP to approve that issue of the permits. So we can't to approve the permit. Right. For the well. Right. And that's part of the, the floodplain is part of that overall application, from my understanding. Yeah, and where they're, where they're looking to place the tanks are, is not in the floodplain. Correct. But um, the activities have been stopped there because they need to have a stormwater plan approved by the township and there have been issues with that. So that little access road that goes from the ramp down in back to the well pad itself. Um, I can say I've been up at the area and 
uh, the, the neighboring property just to the north never had water sitting in, their, in the yard for long periods of time once the creek receded. And there is water sitting there now. So the roadway that they've got going into that is causing a, a problem with, uh, with the water leaving the site. We usually have the same problem with, with our property because the, the whole area there, there's a lot of clay in it. And mm -hmm. right now, when we have heavy rains, there's sections of our yard that will have standing water for at least you can't even you know, drive a lawnmower to, to, to take care of the property. That, that whole property that's in the woods has those exact same soils. Once they start putting a road system in there to, to get access, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. People downstream, because they're actually, you know, the uh, contour of the land is down, obviously, towards the Allegheny River. Uh, those properties over towards uh, Crestview Boulevard have had a lot of problems with standing water in their, in their properties. And, you know, one of the things I found out in my discussions with the DEP is you know, obviously, they have limited resources. And so, you know, the information that they're supplied by whom, whomever is making the application, you know, for the permit, they, they take that as being true and true and correct. And until people, you know, bring things to their attention, like we have in, in our instance, you know, they don't have any factual information or any, or any concerns being brought to them, they will just let, you know, let the permit go through, which is pretty much what I think happened, you know, in in North Warren was an application was made from their standpoint, they didn't see any problems. Now you bring up a good point but in terms of, well, perhaps if it's in the floodplain, maybe they should have recognized something. They should have. But you know what? It didn't happen. Yeah. And when we tried to contact them afterwards, it was too late. It had already confirmed our issue. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the I think it's important to remember that you're kind of at a confluence of, uh, of a couple of issues. This is like one of those rare situations where, you, you know, um, a couple of, the way things are set up come to meet and you get to a situation like the well in Conwango, which everybody goes, well, how is that ever approved? Like everybody that's ever looked at it kind of has that look, you know. Right. And, and the thing is, is that I talked with uh, Aaron Wells. Uh, from DEP, like one of the regional um, directors, and about this situation, and um, it's it's one of those weird things where, um, on the one hand, you have DEP, which has the, the law that they follow and have to make uh, determinations on, but where when it comes generally to like where wells are generally placed, residential, non-residential, they kick it back to the county. They say it's up to you to figure out what your zoning is going to be. So you go back to the county situation and you have what Dan talks about, which is limited resources, limited ability to make determinations, a lot of politics, a lot of, uh, you know, who likes who and all that kind of stuff. And so that makes it difficult for them, for us to then, and then that's when the can gets kicked back to DUP to say, listen, we don't have the resources to really evaluate this. You know, and the other thing is, is that you have like a regional issue too, because if we make broad determinations on stuff, there are going to be people that'll be negatively affected by it economically. You know, so this is one of those things that's going to require a lot of discussion to figure out some kind of solution. And there may not be a solution, but um, but I guess that's kind of my point is, is I don't want anybody to think that anyone's doesn't want to hear what the concerns are, or that uh, that nobody's willing to like work or listen to the situation, because I think that there is a legitimate concern. And, and, and even with the environmental issues aside, the, the points that you bring up about property value, I think is a very important one, because if you live in a neighborhood and, you know, with kids or whatever, or you, you know, you want to bring families into your community and they're going to move into a house that's going to have oil tanks right next door to it when they that, that didn't previously, um, you know, that's going to be a concern, you know. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that you guys brought this information here. and I think it's something that we have to continue to have a conversation about. Where is the closest structure? Where is That's a good question. Okay, so our home is up, up towards this direction, but there's homes, you know, obviously all the way down here. Um, I have a shed down here. This is 200. What's the definition of a structure? A structure, and that's that. Well, I think the DP is will 
I think there will be other spots in this property when the DP starts handing out variances for sheds. Mm -hmm. Because right now, um, this is about 200 feet from my home, but there are sheds here. Let's say there's a shed here, and it's 200 feet exactly from that. The house is actually another 40 feet back, so maybe you pop another one right there, 40 feet away right from that one. There's um, a phrase in Latin, gnosis decipio, which essentially means to beguile or to cheat. <laughs> I'm wondering if you were close enough in order to have an addition that fell within that 200. It's too late. Yeah, I mean, if, if, the house, if the house was yeah. that shift is that much farther. Um, well, we shouldn't know. have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Add an addition and, 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 the You know, the, the point is that we don't, none of us say there shouldn't be oil and gas here. But this is obviously not appropriate in a residential neighborhood where you have children, um, you have people trying to sleep, you're going to have gas fumes falling the down New Santa Street. This is the bad kind of like this. Right. Um, you know, it's obviously not appropriate, but right now it's legal. So I think there should be some kind of solution. Um, it's interesting what you say about setbacks because we thought that would be an easy one. Because really, that's why I, nobody's I complained yeah. before, because if it's, you know, a couple hundred feet from your property line and it's shielded by shrubs and all, you know, who's going to really complain? We all drive cars. Mm -hmm. But five feet from my property line with no requirements for any kind of shielding from that well, um, you know, is appropriate mm -hmm. for my health, safety, and property value. This, this distance issue is interesting because in North Warren, um, the well is apparently precisely 201 feet from uh, a neighbor's house. Well, that's basically what this is. The question he has is, did they measure from the corner of my house or from the roof line? Because the roof overhangs the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we're going back to the comment about the shed and the question about the shed. This is what it says. Wells may not be drilled within 200 feet, measured horizontally from a vertical well bore to a building. Right. I guess you could argue the shed's a building. Uh, or water well, existing when the copy of the plant is... Uh, uh, mail is required by section blah, 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 without written consent of the owner of the building or water well. And so perhaps Mike can address that because he has yeah. to. It, you know, when, you, when you read that regulation, there's actually, uh, like it was mentioned before, you know, a municipality cannot prevent a person from you know, giving into the subsurface uh, rights that they own. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a provision for variance. Mm -hmm. When they talk about buildings, you know, the DEP will generally say it has to be an occupied structure. It's an occupied structure. Well, you know, if you have a working shed, they will most likely consider that to be an occupied structure. Well, what's a working shed? A working shed is somewhere where I, you know, conduct my hobby on a routine basis, I suppose. You know, is it just a shed that I have my lawnmower in and I go out there and I start it up and pull it out. That's not, they would say that's not a, uh, you know, a working building. You know, it's, it's not an occupied building. Uh, you know, when it comes to, to water wells, you know, the, the regulation that, you know, clearly talks about water wells, it also talks about water sources. You know, there's a difference between a water source and a water well. Mm -hmm. in, our, in our case, we've cited a water well that exists on our property. Most likely the, the DEP said, you know, they will grant a variance for it as long as all the right things are done. Uh, and I suspect this, the same thing could happen uh, if, you know, the individual that wants to harvest those rice, if they want to go in there and drill and you're still within the 200 feet, they can apply for a variance. And if the DEP cannot find fault or, you know, cannot find reasons to deny that permit, uh, you know, they will grant the variance. Uh, I think that's what we all have to recognize is that, you know, as, as we, you know, harvest our mineral resources, you know, people are going to find newer, newer technologies, other technologies in terms of how they can go in and get, you know, get those resources. Yeah. And, you know, we should all be cognizant that, you know, the, the surface owner should have some protection mm -hmm. in terms of its property, its property, value, uh, you know, proximity to things. 
What one solution, and I agree with what was said about this is a, a jurisdictional gray area once you get into the floodplain or in a residential neighborhood. Um, because I called DEP and I asked them, uh, what are, what's my recourse? And they say, go to the county because DEP, while it authorizes the well, it doesn't authorize the well pad, the access road, and other structures that, that are built on the property in order to uh, actually drill that well. And in the case of North Warren, it's the structures that cause the problem. It's the well pad, 40 by 80 feet, that's essentially an earthen dam that was built in the floodplain. Yeah. Um, that's impacting neighbors in that neighborhood. So it's one important issue. But it seems to me one possibly easy solution could be to make this a conditional use in our own neighborhoods. Because conditional uses, correct me if I'm wrong, um, require the zoning board to actually review it. And there might be opportunity for public to raise issues at that time. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, I understand where you're coming from, uh, but the problem I see happening and, and going back to uh, going back to Colorado the Township for instance, all of this up in here with this huge plots of land and the hundreds of wells that are there. We're, we're never going to know if, if you just made a conditional use in R1. We're never going to know about those. Now with these permits, every single one of them are an ACR. Yeah. I said these promises that they love when you were talking about. Yeah. Well, I, a couple of things to consider. Um, one is that Dan, as Dan has stated, it seems to me like we have way too much property zoned R1. Frankly, it looks like to me like there's enormous tracts of land there that are not going to be residential um, anytime soon. Um, especially with, you know, that's one thing. Um, the second thing is is that. Um, a lot of that property, the wells have already been drilled on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the notion that there's going to be a ton of well activity there, I, I have a hard time believing that, although I don't have the numbers on that, it could be. Um, I, I think that it'd be worth looking at to have a discussion with the municipalities about, you know, and, and the planning commission about what their feeling is about the idea of having, you know, like a conditional use set up for legitimately res residential like zoned properties or having an addition like changing the zoning setup so that you're either legitimately because because that's my thing is is having a bunch of stuff zoned residential that isn't residential i mean you're yeah. you're hamstringing those properties as well with or the regulations related to residential properties yeah that's why i'm suggesting maybe a third zoning district called rural residential that would allow yeah for that kind of activity the, just the r1 which you would have very small properties 50 by 100 100 by 200 those small ones that um, would would prohibit it yeah. so that discussion would take place at the zoning well um it would be um through the planning commission and onto the commissioners to amend the zoning ordinance and the map to create that new district that we would be in a sense adding one more zoning district to the um, eight or nine we already have, and then just making that rural residential and actually identifying those on the lot. Going back to what you were suggesting with a comprehensive rezoning in all 12 municipalities that are under the ordinance and just looking at those large tracts of residential one to, to reconsider for rural residential. Because our residential ordinance, like having an area zoned residential, I mean, creates a greater level of regulation of those properties. Right. There. Typically, like, the R1 is the most restrictive. Yeah, so if, so if you took, I mean, this is where I see it as somewhat of a trade-off. You have huge sections that you could hypothetically then open up for other development um, because they would no longer have the restrictions of, of rural or, or rather like R1 mm -hmm. status. At the same time, give people in urbanized communities the opportunity to at least have a hearing when a well is going to be drilled. Um, to for them to at least voice their complaints. Yeah. I mean, the issue, one of the issues with the Conowango well is, is that it it was essentially done overnight with very little oversight. I we mean, never got notice of it. I don't know if the municipality <clears throat> did. And did they? They did, but it probably got shelved. They can't to this day find the letter, but they did sign the you know the mail registration receipt. Mm -hmm. 
Well, okay. yeah, and I, and I mean, that's kind of the thing is, is for most of the communities are, are in North Horn, for instance, I mean, there are no other wells in that area that I'm aware of. Are there? Uh, there is upstream, uh, a, a half mile. Uh, About BEI. Okay. Yeah. Behind BEI? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I, in, in that I, residential area, I mean, having someone drill to you would, without any notice to you as a resident would be a surprise. It would be. It was a total surprise. That's pretty your well. And that's kind of my point. In some areas, I mean, it's understood that there's going to be development of that nature. In other areas, there's not. And, I mean, I think that the community should at least have an opportunity to say, um, you know, voice their concerns over what, or have their concerns quieted, you know. I mean, I think that's part of the price of trying to drill in a residential neighborhood, shouldn't it be? I mean, I, that's, you know, I don't, I think that everybody here agrees that we're not here to, to put the kibosh to the oil industry to prevent people from drilling. But at the same time, like, it can't be a free-for-all. I mean, there, there are legitimate property concerns. If we were going to put in a halfway house, Think about the number of concerns that be voiced about that. You know, if we were going to put in, you know, we we, we had, we were, you know, if we were going to put in a, a, a work release center, you know, put in a move to jail. How many how many citizens would show up for that hearing? You know, like if you're going to drill in an urban community, I mean, I think there should be some ability for the community around it to to voice the concerns. I have a question. Would be easier to for a public water system. Okay, but couldn't we do something that's similar to that, but in regard to this is a no drilling oil zone or something like that? But then you get into the place of how do you make that determination? You're gonna to have to meet with every single municipal, all the 12 zone municipalities and then figure out what areas you're legitimately. And there's gonna be, and I, I mean, I understand the concerns, I welcome the concerns, but at the same time, you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be mad that you're doing anything at all. I mean, they're, they're perfectly happy drilling in rural, in urban areas. I mean, so in those communities, are you going to tell them that they can't drill? You know, there, should, there, there has to be a, a discussion both ways. You know, like, I, I, you can't, because the thing is, is like, let's put it this way. Rezoning everything is going to be a huge undertaking. Just in and of itself, okay. So, like, if you like, I know what you're saying about, okay, we're going to do R ones. All R ones are no, you can't draw. That map is going to have to be dramatically redrawn, and there's going to be people on there that have R one properties that they're drilling on right now that are going to be furious if they if their property remains R one. Like, so this is what I mean. There's got to be. You're, it's a very complex situation mm -hmm. beyond just the colors on that map. So to me, it, it seems like there has to be a variable where in the places where they really, really don't want it, that where the community agrees that they don't want it, they have to have the opportunity to try to prevent that from happening. But if you do it across the board, every, every R1, there's no drilling, that map is going to have to change pretty dramatically. And, there's, and you're probably going to have to have an R1A for everybody who wants to, you know, like, I mean, there's going to be, I, it's, it's a, that's, a, that's an even bigger can of worms than having a few hearings because people want to drill in the American area. Chris, you solve that problem instead of, you know, obviously, you've got these mapping systems. Could you solve that by saying, okay, we, we feel that, you know, 
any R1 areas that have properties of about this size, whatever this size might be, maybe it's two acres, three acres, you know, there's some number, right? And then if there's a certain concentration of those in terms of, you know, a, a grouping concentration that says, you know, here's, here's an area, for instance, uh, you know, I don't know what Youngsville does, but like downtown Youngsville, they said, like, yeah, you wouldn't want to be drilling here. Couldn't it be managed some way in that fashion? So then you come up with these, you know, these areas. You say, like, yeah, this is where we should be ex excluding this. That, that's, that's something that sounds similar to something that the state of Pennsylvania or the federal government would do. And, <laughs> and, and what happens is, is, is and, and I, I'm just saying, it, it would be the same situation that we're dealing with with the flood maps and everything else. Is Dan would have a number, a bunch of people coming into his office on a regular basis, basically flipping out because they've been unnecessarily lumped into a group with a bunch of other people and they don't think it's fair. Um, all of these, I mean, it's impossible to see how all of these properties are divided up and what their uses are. Um, the, I mean, the, because I, I, and the only reason I say that is because there are people working round the clock looking and analyzing at all of these properties, buying little pieces of them up, buying large pieces of them up, dividing them up, putting them together. I, I just think that you're going to get it. it, it you, there's no way to just easily put something over this. I mean, I, mean may, I may be wrong about that. Maybe there is an easy way to just say, okay, this whole section's not... Um, you can't drill here. Uh, well, but we, we would have to apply uniformly. If you're going to do conditional use for residential one, then it's got to apply to this huge one here the same as it would this tiny little one over here. And to do an, an overlay, I think I'd want to get a legal opinion on something like that because then it's, it's kind of going outside of, of, of zoning. The reason the, the overlay makes sense for the North Warren project is just to protect its withdrawal area for the public water system, the subsurface withdrawal area. Here, in, in, in this case here, it's just to restrict certain types of activities within an identified area. And maybe it makes more sense to just create a specific zoning designation as opposed to an overlay for certain types of properties. Okay. See, uh, and, and that's the thing is, is like the, what you were talking about with the overlay. I mean, isn't really going to address their concern. It's not going to address well the pleasant. It's not going to address pleasant. And it's not. But there, my the way that I would, I, I don't know what I'm going to say here, but uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't. But uh, the way that I would address it is to figure out a way, or one way that you could potentially address it. And I don't even know if this is legal or not is to have some kind of setup where the cluster of properties around a certain area that, you know, d absolutely do not want anything related to them should have the opportunity to, you know, prevent that from happening. I just, I, it, it, uh, I don't know how you would do that, whether there would be a regulatory opportunity where if, if so, and so, so many people write a letter or sign a check a box or whatever, uh, yeah. Where um, before uh, Ben has to leave, the this came up at a planning commission meeting back a few months ago. Pleasant Township supervisors were there along with some residents and some folks from Conowango, and the planning commission asked the township supervisors of Pleasant to kind of go back to their um, municipality and put together what they thought would be a um, reasonable amendment to the zoning ordinance, and then come back to the planning commission as a starting point. Um, we've not heard back from the supervisors yet. I'm not sure what stage they are in, in that uh, at this point. But the commission knows the background of where we used to regulate it and why we got out of regulating it. And if, if the county is going to get into regulating, it's, we've got to be very careful not to overstep bounds um, because of the Oil and Gas Act. Uh, and it's, it's something we sh we're not going to be able to throw together overnight. Oh, no way. Right. No. Do you anticipate that Pleasant is putting together a proposal? I, I don't know. Oh, what, I, what, what I know, know, yeah, what I know is that uh, their, their attorney has gotten back to them in regards to, you know, what are, what are the legal you know, ramifications of can they actually do something, uh, you know, and, and so that they have, apparently have that information where they stand, but I don't know. And, okay. and like you mentioned before, all, all those 
supervisors are down in, the, in Harrisburg districts. So what it boils down to is the Supreme Court did rule that um, municipalities do have the right to regulate the activity through zoning, but um, there are preemptions. Well, and that's how DEP recently sued those two municipalities because they wrote regulations that uh, out undone had undid the state law mm -hmm. essentially. And yeah, this information that I've given you there kind of gives you a summary of what has happened over the course of time. Uh, that that top I, uh, article that you have there, Jeff, I think mm -hmm. is dated just with last year, 2016. Yep. So. Um, you know, it, it gives you the most current. State school of law also has a website that you go yeah. to that has all the various regulations that deal with oil and gas and, and you know, from the municipality. Also, just to point back to the conditional use issue, um, would it would it be expensive or prohibitive to, um, you know, have those who are interested in drilling in residential areas go through this additional layer of review? Um, well, uh, how many wells are being drilled in residential neighborhoods? I don't really know. I know that in 2016, the EP uh, permitted 46 wells in Warren County, mm -hmm. uh, only one of which that I know of was in a residential neighborhood. Um, they give you that long, and I didn't plot all those on a map, but if someone would like to, or maybe I will, just to see. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what, uh, what you're able to find that way, because, like I said, these some of these large tracks here, they're nothing but forest land. Right, yeah. There's not right, yeah. a single residence on them, but there's only residential one. Right. So, so if it's only one or two wells a year, and it comes before the zoning board, that might be a very easy thing. And well, that's kind of, that was the question that I was asking was, like, how, what numbers are we legitimately dealing with? Because, uh, and, and of those, what did you say, 43? 46. 46? Of those 46, how many were in the 12 zone municipalities that we deal right. with? I mean, and how many were even drilled? That's the number of permits. Yeah, yeah. The, the industry has kind of stepped back a little bit, but I think that's soon to change. And Dan can correct me, but if we make it as a conditional, then don't we have to create a criteria of what's yes. allowable for the zone? Yeah. So they can actually yeah, I mean, we can't steps. say, we can't, we, we, we can't overstep the um, the Oil and Gas Act and say 200 feet from a property line because if the subsurface property line goes beyond that, you know. So really, with the conditional use, even. Maybe we, if we, can, we can do things like require fencing around a, a pump jack if the lot is of a certain minimum si or yeah maximum size or minimum size, mm -hmm. and um, a few other things like the tank, maybe the tank batteries, but. We've not gotten into the tank battery thing because if we start regulating those, that means we have to regulate the um, feral gas tanks for propane, which are significantly smaller. Where do you draw the line? You know, it's to address what you just said, Michael, the um, nice thing about having a zoning review is they would ask, do you have all the permits you need? Uh, one of those would be the stormwater, the stormwater uh, permit. Mm -hmm. And, for example, the one in North Warren was drilled without having a stormwater permit in place uh, or an erosion and sediment control plan, which is supposed to be in place, which may not be. Uh, so it's a layer of review that makes sure that all of the laws are being complied with. And I think, from my own perspective, that's, an, that's a significant value add that county government could provide. But the only thing then, how would you prevent a well being drilled in the middle of a neighborhood? I mean, what kinds of what kind of regulations could you use? Like, say, the situation here, where I'm, you know, there'll be a well perhaps five feet off my property line. Like, what kind of recourse would you guys have in the zoning? Yeah. You don't have anything there. Yeah. Well, I, I, but, 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 but this, goes, this is the same. This is similar though to a rezoning. Though I mean, we have to make a, a judgment call based on what the situation is, and we can vote against a, a rezoning if we feel like the situation. I mean, at least there's another board of people that are going to legitimately review the information. Um, if as far as actually the location of the hole in the ground, though, I don't think we can regulate that because that's not considered a structure. We could regulate the tanks. Um, 
require a fence around the pump jack, but it's not gonna it's not gonna solve the concern. And, 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 and you know, I agree that it's a concern. I just don't know what an easy answer is right. at this point. So I guess what you're saying is unless you actually do a rezone type of property, will not will not allow it. Like the city of Warren does. You know, this is mm -hmm. R1 in the city of Warren, you can't drill in. So unless you're saying the county does something like that, then basically you have no control over a situation in the well. I mean, you have control yeah. in terms of you're going to make somebody go to the fence, but other than that, it's still going to be there in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Right. So I think that's what everyone needs to think yeah. about. Is that what we want in our community? Is that going to help our community grow into the future? Um, as people come and say, I'm not going to buy this is house with a well in the backyard. Uh, or okay, I'll give you, you know, some help for it. Yeah. So I think that's something we need to think about. If the conditional use thing isn't actually going to keep it. Yeah, you know, I, when I when I when I look at this whole thing here, because of how technical it can get, mm -hmm. and how complicated it can get, I would feel more comfortable. <laughs> going to an attorney who has a background, a strong, solid background in zoning mm -hmm. to be able to determine the best way to approach the situation like this. I agree. Because, you know, you're, you're up, a, up against an industry that is well established here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the documents I had given you was put together by a, um, a, a firm that does the extraction, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they've done a lot of research on those court cases. So it's not. Uh, it's a, well, I, I mean, I I agree to some extent. I do, and I understand like the kind of concerns about the oil and gas industry. And oil and gas is a major industry in Pennsylvania. It needs to grow. It needs to thrive. At the same time, the city has eliminated drilling within city limits. That's and why there are residential districts. You can, residential you can, yeah, you can drill in the industrial districts. Right. In the yeah, but if you drive across the train tracks, there's a bunch of oil wells there, and there's a reason they're there because it's beyond the city residential limits. And and I, and my thing is, is I don't, I, I would never have any interest in eliminating drilling anywhere, um, just broadly speaking. But I think that it's important to have a discussion about allowing communities the opportunity, at least on some level, to make a determination about what goes in their backyard and, and giving them an opportunity to voice those concerns. In every other situation, there would be a public hearing. People would be able to complain publicly about whatever the situation is, try to sway the opinion of the public officials associated with it. You know, stuff that affects people on a daily basis. And I gave several examples earlier and, and right now with the current setup, now granted, I don't think this is something that's going to happen every year. I don't think it's going to happen all the time. You know, I think that we have a couple of examples that have come out that, like I said, are a confluence of, you know, regulation, politics, and everything else. But, you know, I, I, at, the, at the same time that I understand that there are a lot of challenges, I think that at the same time it's worth having a discussion about because I don't think it's impossible with the, with the right willpower and the right work. To, do, to 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 you know give communities an opportunity to deal with the situation. Well, I think that we're on the right track. At least we're having this discussion, and uh, we can take it to the planning committee and see where we go from there. Yeah, we can contact Pleasant Township and see if they've gone any further. Now they are at the association meeting, yeah, so uh, I think they're off. Maybe, yeah, through Thursday. But the county planning commission doesn't meet again until the first Tuesday of next month, um, whichever day that is, uh, sometime next week. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I can see if they've made any headway uh, on their end. Um, but I would like to actually, you know, discuss this in a little more detail with the planning commission. Do more research mm -hmm. on the legal side of things. Because the last thing I want to do is the county adopt something that can get easily challenged in court and overturned. Yeah, we, don't, we don't want to see you do that. Right. Yeah. Is there anything that we as citizens can do to, to assist you? Just continue to provide information. That's mm -hmm. helpful. And I think that's something to be mindful of as, as well is that you know we've got 
you know, DP short staffed, we're short staffed, everybody's short staffed, everybody's running around trying to do 500 things. So, um, you know, if there's something in your backyard that's bothering you, digging up all the information, sharing that with us, um, continuing the conversation is the best way to, to affect it, I think. Dan, I would like you to address with the Planning Commission the idea of the conditional use permit. Okay. And then um, now, conditional creating. use requires planning commission review, county commissioner action. Mm -hmm. the special exception is zoning hearing board. Okay. See, the and special the exception. Commission it seems as though that's that more might be line. more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they can ask the same questions. Mm -hmm. Show us your approved stormwater plan, your approved DNS plan, all those kinds of things. And. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Rather than making a multi-step process, because right. then through the conditional use, the way the conditional use process works is the planning commission reviews it, makes a recommendation under the commissioners, who then hold a public hearing and final decision. With a special exception, the application comes into Michael, it's it's pushed to the zoning hearing board, they hold the hearing uh, right away, and then can pass reasonable conditions. So you're you're omitting one step along the way with a special session, but still arriving at the same objective, which is to have a public hearing and an opportunity to attach any reasonable conditions as well as verify that the proper other permits have been put in place. So my recommendation would be special exception. Even though a lot of the, the um, literature we, we read talks about conditional uses, mm -hmm. but that's what the governing body. Mm -hmm. Special exception would be the zoning hearing board. And you were talking about how property owners would go. Part of either of those processes, property owners within 300 feet of the said parcel gets notified by letter. By so, we post a, we post the property. Right. He um, notifies everybody within 300 feet, and we run a new uh, add a newspaper. There's one thing I think he should be cognizant of, and most people don't realize this. The only reason that we found out about this situation was because a township supervisor provided us with the information that they received. Mm. There's no requirement for the driller to notify mm. us. No, not unless you have something within 200 feet of right. the situation that we're dealing with. So a special exception would come into play in their instance right. then? And I then was, we would we were the ones that had pointed out to the DEP mm -hmm. that there was a water well that was being violated. Mm. And, this, and and that's you know that's another issue with Pleasant Township. You know, you've got a lot of a lot of properties that have their own water sources, mm -hmm. but now are no longer on those water sources. But those water still wells still exist, exist mm -hmm. and may yeah. even still be used. Yeah. yeah. And and I guess I just think we all need to think about if we go to something like special exception, if you still have no way to remove this oil well that's five feet from my property or whoever the next per person is that this happens to, then, you know, offense is great, but my property value will still go way down, my quality of life in terms of breathing fees and everything will go down, and I think, is that what we want? And so, is the special exception going to solve well, and that's why I was offering yeah. a suggestion of creating a, an additional residential that's, decree yeah. and just prohibiting it altogether in the R1. It, okay, so I think we have a lot to explore. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody needs to think about that. The special exception would help me in this instance because we require maybe a fence and some better water management, but my property value would still go down, mm -hmm. my quality of life. So unless, you know, we do something else, um, and and if if it is um, uh, restricted from a newly defined R1 district, mm -hmm. um, then we can't get into trouble legally because we're allowing for it in all of the other zoning districts. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And in the long run, that might be um, especially because. Um, you know, the idea of tours and the idea of what we're heading to in the future in this county. Obviously, it's not manufacturing. I just made that interstate. You know, I you guys are aware of that. So, if we're heading towards encouraging tourism um, and encouraging people to come live here, um, I think we have to be cognizant of our R1 neighborhoods. <coughs> Well, we will do some more research, and we'll uh, contact the uh, the township pleasant. Um, as far as how long the situation goes, right now it's being held up by the supervisors um, because they are not 
comfortable with the stormwater plan that has been provided, and there are problems there with stormwater that need to be addressed. So, um, <coughs> and unfortunately, we can't go back on something that's already been, been permitted or enforce them to be on it. Okay. Thank you for what you presented today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Dan. Have a good afternoon. You too. Thank you. I'll be honest, I haven't eaten anything. Are we done? I think so. Yeah. Thank you. And we have training Yeah. Can we, can, do you, did you pick that date just for the hell of it? No, you told me this was the date to run me this year. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, did you yeah, pick the date? I have my own thoughts on it. We only had one. Do you, do you, do you, would you mind moving you and Ed to like another day? Right. I don't think I'd like to jump in for you. Because then, because of this, you are trying to have the ready. Yeah, because i got to get an answer with my payroll stuff. Yeah, I'll get what you're saying. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on.